All right, so it is pretty hot in this car, so I'm going to make this video as quick as I possibly can. And also, I'm going to do this entire video without getting out of the car even once. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is because to me, that is a big part of stealth camping, is being able to do everything without actually getting outside of the car. Because if you're in a parking lot that you plan on sleeping in for the night, if you get out of your car and people see all the stuff you have in there, it's going to tip them off that you are stealth camping. Or I guess at that point, you're no longer stealth camping, you're now car camping. Me, I prefer stealth camping, I prefer staying low key. So I wanna show you guys my setup and how I have my car situated because yesterday, I did go to my storage unit up in the valley, San Fernando Valley, and I put a lot of stuff in there, okay, probably about 40% of my belongings, especially the more space consuming ones like my guitar as well as my other storage container, I put those in the storage unit. So now, it's set up exactly how it's going to be pretty much for the foreseeable future. So first of all, I want to show you guys the front seat or I guess you could say the cockpit of the car. This is my trash can. I usually just use one bag. I put it on the door handle like this and then at night I'll put it over on that door handle over there. But I keep a box of tissues right here just in case, I don't know, my nose is running or I'm having an allergy attack or something. I keep my phone up here and I also charge my phone while I drive typically. So. That saves me a lot of time and a lot of effort of having to go somewhere else to charge my phone or having to burn my battery even further, my power generator, which I will show you here in a second. Having to burn my battery from my power generator to charge my phone. Instead, I can allocate all of that to recharging my camera and my laptop. Now, right here, I have this attachment. This allows me to either use my phone as a secondary GPS or I can put my camera on this right here. I can simply just take this piece off and then I would simply use the bottom of my camera to screw it into this right here, to this attachment. And then once I'm editing the footage, I can just flip the footage upside down. And right here in the passenger seat, I don't really have anything. I just keep my bag and this is a flannel that I have. I'm just wearing it today. If you're from California or if you've been to California, you know that it's best to dress in layers because it can be cold at night, bro. It gets cold at night. It'll get into the 40s, sometimes even the 30s. Last night, I think it was probably 40 degrees. I felt every bit of that 40 degrees. Believe me when I tell you, it was cold. But during the day, it tends to be warm, so I have my flannel right there, or if I'm wearing a hoodie, I'll keep that there. But at night, I don't keep my bag there. At night, I like to keep the front area, the cockpit, pretty much completely empty per stealth camping. That's one thing about stealth camping is that if you keep the front of the car empty, nobody's going to know you're in the back. Usually when you stealth camp, you put a bunch of shit up in the passenger seat or the driver's seat, and not only does that make you a target for police or for security guards, it makes you a target for criminals, for thieves. And there is nothing worse, at least that I can imagine, there's nothing worse than getting your car broken into while you're sleeping inside of it. That sounds terrible, wouldn't wish that on anyone. But basically, man, keep the cockpit very, very clean. In here, my... Center console, I have two chargers. First, I have my phone charger. I have a really long phone charger. I don't know why I got one that was that long. And then I also have my power station charger, which I will show you guys in a second, like I said. So just keep this in mind that this is where this is located. And you can see I just run the wires out through these little grooves right here. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys the back of the car and let me show you how I set it up at night. Even though it's the middle of the day, I wanna show you how I set it up at night for stealth camping. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I actually get into the back of the car at night. So it's a very, very simple process. As you guys saw earlier, I have the front seat pushed up a little bit further than the driver's seat and that's for a reason. It's because my bed is adjacent to my driver's seat so I can literally just step right here and remember I'm 5'9 I'm not that tall so if you're 6'5 you might not be able to do this but basically I'll take one step here one step here and boom just like that I'm in the back of the car just like that and nobody will know nobody will know especially at night my windows are partially tinted that's something I would recommend for anybody who is looking to do what I do as far as car camping goes do not be out here sleeping in a car with fishbowl tint don't do that. I have a tent and I have window covers, which you guys will see here in a second. But first, I wanna show you guys my sleeping arrangements. Okay, so this right here is the bed situation. So basically, as you guys can see, I have this camper mattress and 
I'm gonna put a link to all of this stuff in the description. I got this from Amazon, I got the sleeping bag from Amazon. And basically the only reason why I use this is because in my car specifically, when I put the seats down, you can see there's a big gap right there. There's just a big drop off and you can feel that in your hip or in your back or whatever is laying on that gap. But with this camping mattress, I don't feel it whatsoever. In fact, this camping mattress is very, very comfortable. It's surprisingly comfortable to say it was so cheap. But I have this camping mattress and then I use the sleeping bag for warmth. If it's any colder than what the sleeping bag can sustain me for, then I probably just won't sleep there. But if I do need a blanket, I have one in the storage unit. But like I said, if I need the blanket, I probably won't be there in the first place. Right here I have my pillow. This is the same pillow I've been using since I was probably 16 and it is holding on for dear life as you guys can see. But this camping mattress also has this little pillow piece on the back, which makes this bed a lot more comfortable actually. It optimizes the angle at which I sleep, especially since in this situation, if you guys can look, my feet are actually slightly above my head. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it helps to have that little elevation right there. So right here on the side, I have my laundry equipment, I have my detergent, I have some bleach in there, I have a lint roller, so on and so forth, just basic laundry equipment. I also have my Kindle e-reader, which I like to read every night and every morning if I can, but typically I would keep this right here so that when I wake up I can just grab it. Now, right here I have my suitcase. This is where I keep most of my clothes. The majority of my clothing is in the suitcase, it's folded up. I don't really have too many clothes these days, but the clothing that I do have is mostly in here. But I also have things like socks and underwear, as well as hats in this drawer. And then right here, I have my jackets, hoodies, denim jackets. I have one thick coat, which to my point earlier, if I need to use that thick jacket, I probably just won't be in that place, at least for too long. Right here, I can't really open it with the bed out, but I have my towels in here. Okay, I live in a car, but I am still a big proponent of not reusing towels. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not reusing my towel. I don't care what you say. I don't care what type of rationale you bring my way. I'm not reusing my towels. You can reuse your towels if you want to, but I'm not doing that. So these are my shoes right here. I have three pairs of shoes. I have the Converse right here, the classics. Everyone has to have a pair of these, but you gotta have a pair of these. I have a pair of running slash hiking shoes. I don't really use these too much anymore, but if I need them, they're there. And then I have my Nike blazers which I have up there. Whatever shoes I'm wearing for that day, I'll keep up there because it makes it easier to just put them on and then start driving. But I don't like to wear shoes in the back of the car just because I don't want to damage the sleeping bag or even the upholstery underneath. So I typically refrain from doing that. Right here, I have all of my toiletries. So this is going to be my face wash, my soap, anything that I need for showering and or self-care for the most part is going to be in that bag right there. And that's the bag that I take with me to the gym. I'll typically have my toiletries, I'll have a towel, and I'll have a change of clothes. And then I also have my shower shoes at the bottom. And I'll probably explain how I take a shower and all that in another video. And then I have my curtains right here. I use these curtains every single night to divide the front and back seats. Believe me when I tell you that that makes a world of difference. Some people like to put a windshield cover on, but to me, that is way, way too overt. It makes it very obvious that you're car camping because who puts a window cover on at nighttime? Right? It doesn't make sense. So like I said, I like to make the front of my car look as normal as possible while keeping the back of my car very comfortable but also very minimalistic. And if you guys haven't noticed, I'm using a lot of dark colors here because it's much more difficult to see dark colors through the window, whether at night or during the day. But I like to use black, gray, things like that, which are not as noticeable. And that helps me with the stealth camping, man. Even my laundry bag right here, this is where I keep all of my dirty clothes. The reason why I put the laundry bag right here is because I wanted to keep my power strip, which I have right here, I wanted to keep this from sliding. If I, let's say for example, hit the brakes really hard, then it falls down, then I have to go and get it. And it's just a big extra hassle, okay? So I keep my power strip right here behind the laundry bag and that keeps it pretty secure. And then as you can see, I have 
a cord running from the power strip, power cord running to my power generator. So this is my Jackery Explorer 300. The reason why I got the 300 is for one, because I'm cheap, and two, because it's much quicker and much easier to recharge. And you can recharge it while you're driving, which is why I have the little cord running from the center console. I would use this to plug it in to this port right here, and I would charge it while I'm driving. And when I'm taking road trips especially, that comes in handy because the bigger power generators might take eight hours to recharge. And you obviously won't be able to do that fully in a car, more often than not anyways. But I charge it when I'm driving and being in Southern California, you do a lot of driving. So that works out in my favor. Right here I have my technology bag. This is where I keep my laptop. Sometimes I'll keep my camera in here if I'm going somewhere else. Whatever, I have a lot of cords and just relatively insignificant stuff in this bag, but stuff that I use pretty much on a daily basis nevertheless. Typically, I will keep my camera down in that little compartment right there because literally nobody can see it down there. It's in the shadows and it's behind the trash bag. But if it's not there, then it's here in this pocket. And if it's not in this pocket or there, it's up there on that mount or in my hand like it is right now. And I also keep my water right here. You guys might be wondering how I refill my water. I do that at the gym. Let me tell you guys something, bro. Planet Fitness, this $20 a month black card membership, or I think it's $25 a month, I don't know. That black card membership is worth it. If you're doing this lifestyle, get you a Planet Fitness black card membership. I'm not sponsored by them, <laughs> but we might have to get something in the works, bro, because they definitely come in clutch. Believe me when I tell you. It's a place to sleep, a place to shower, a place to refill your water, a place to get dressed, a place to do a lot of different things, bro. Use the bathroom. A lot of them are 24 hours. And with the Black Card membership, you have access to a massage chair, hydro massage, all of this extra stuff that most gyms don't even have. And you can work out on top of that. It's, it's the best possible investment you can make right next to some really good window covers. Now, I want to show you guys what this looks like when I put the window covers up in my car because these window covers make this car completely discreet. At night, it looks like the windows are just tinted. It looks like I have a limo tint on the back. In some places, the cops might press you for having that on the front. So I typically try not to use the window covers on the front unless I have something in the front that's valuable. But like I said, I like to keep the front empty anyways. So I wanna show you guys what the car looks like with the window covers on, or at least I'm going to try to show you because it does get really, really, really dark in here. But, oh, you know what, hold on, before I show you guys that, I forgot to mention, this right here is my food container. So I keep all of my food, which is all non-perishable items, bread, peanut butter, granola, canned food, tortillas, things like that, I keep that all in here. So that's my methodology, I like to keep all of my food in here. And it can be a little difficult to access, but I like to eat fixed meals anyways. I prefer not to just eat sporadically throughout the day because it can interrupt my flow, if you will. But yeah, now I wanna go ahead and show you guys what this car looks like when I put these window covers on. Mind you, my car is already dark to begin with. It's dark blue, so at night it blends in. But once I put these window covers on, nobody knows that I'm there. Okay, so this is what the car looks like when I have the window covers on. As you can see, I have the back one on right there. I have one on each side. I'll typically only put the ones on the back windows, like I said, but I also have some that fit the front windows. This is one of the best investments you can make, some quality window covers, because with good window covers, you can get good quality sleep and you cannot put a price on that. So in addition to using the window covers, I have these two curtains, which like I said, divide the front and the back seats. And the way that I do that is I'll typically move this right here. I have this device, this, attachment similar to that one except it's bigger and I'll use this to hook the curtains from here okay I have a clip right here and then I have another clip on the other side right here so I'll run the curtains which have holes at the top as you can see I'll run those curtains all the way across I have two of them boom 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 and usually what I'll do is I'll also open the sunroof a little bit to keep the ventilation going I should probably do that right now it's hot as hell I'm starting to sweat doing it for you guys but tonight I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like with the curtains on because I don't really feel like having to unfold and then fold those curtains back up so tonight I'm going to go ahead and put the curtains on and I'm going to film that and show you what the car looks like at night 
because believe me when I tell you, you can't see anything in here, bro. You cannot see anything in this car. And it definitely feels very safe and secure. It's also very comfortable. And I'm getting all of this for $360 a month. Once the car is paid off, $0 a month. Or I guess whatever insurance will be. But yeah, man, I mean, I'm living the life, man. I'm out here in Oxnard, California. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a basketball court. I don't have a basketball, but that's the ocean right there, man. I think it is anyways. Pretty sure that's the Pacific Ocean. And you see it's just this little beachfront town. A lot of old people, a lot of retirees, all that. A lot of people walking around and whatnot, but I'm probably about to go take a walk on the beach because I can't. <laughs>